Hello and welcome to Tomorrow Today, the science show on DW. Coming up... Ones and O's, big data powers much of the internet. So how does it all work? German student Jessica Weber spends a lot of time online, but would prefer to remain anonymous. She's installed an ad blocker and also cleans out her browser data on a regular basis. I try to be careful and to reveal a minimum of information about myself. I use the settings to protect my data as far as possible while surfing. But will that prevent companies from collecting her data and composing an individual behavior profile? Mark Eagley is less concerned about his online data. The Guatemala-born marketing student has installed 20 apps on his smartphone. He uses 11 of them regularly including apps that belong to Facebook and Google. For me, it's an advantage for Google and Facebook to have my data and then provide me with ads and recommendations. We accompany the two of them through a typical digital day. What kind of data are companies gathering about them? And how is it used to create personalized advertising? Martin Klarmann is professor of marketing at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. He and his team are trying to locate the digital trail left by the students and then assess which data could be used for individual marketing. You have to invest a whole lot of energy to surf anonymously. Regular people don't really have a way of avoiding their data being collected. The first stop on our tour is a news website that Jessica visits regularly. While she reads, the site stores small files with information about Jessica's usage on her hard drive, cookies. The marketing experts follow what happens when Jessica is on the website. The cookies store data, such as Jessica's preferred language and other personal page settings. What the researchers also find are cookies from other domains, represented here by triangles. These third-party cookies recognize Jessica on all the sites they're linked up to and enable companies to track her across the net and collect vital data on her surfing habits. Amazon is also Here's Amazon, and here we have a cookie from Google, PageAd, and another double-click. Jessica regularly deletes her browser data, including unwanted cookies. So can she still be identified and tracked online? Her browser automatically sends data such as her screen resolution, font, operating system and time zone to the provider of the site she's currently on. That data helps them to optimize their site. Jessica visits amiunique.org to find out whether she can be identified and tracked. It turns out she can. As nobody else relays the exact same data as Jessica, website providers can recognize and follow her and place ads on her screen, even without cookies. Meanwhile, Mark wants to buy a new laptop. He's already tried out a range of online suppliers and found one that he likes. But as he's not 100% sure, he puts the product in his account's shopping cart and then makes his way to his next lecture. Pretty soon, that online computer store is sending Mark a steady stream of ads to his current laptop and his phone. That's possible due to Mark having registered with Google on both devices. As a result, all websites he visits that have Google cookies will display personalized advertising. And Google also sends out its ads itself as Jessica notices when she looks up frequently used search terms. Banners related to those words then pop up. Google's ads feature runs an auction to determine which banners will show up on a search results page. With terms searched for more frequently, Google charges more money from advertisers. This form of individual marketing does not require behavior profiles. But it's a different story with Facebook. 
Here, the business model involves selling ads and displaying them to specific users. Sounds complicated. Our marketing maestros now have the task of placing an ad on Mark's screen, with the help of some background information about him. First, we're going to confine the location to Karlsruhe. We can also narrow down the age range, and we'll set the gender to male. How old is he? I think 18 to 22 should work. We also know that Mr. Eagley is a soccer fan and supports Manchester United, so we can enter that under his interests. Finally, we know that he was born in Guatemala, so we can add that too. The experts post the banner on Facebook. The question now is, will it appear on Mark's Facebook page? As he browses through photos and texts from his friends, Mark is indeed presented with the fake ad. But he doesn't find this unsettling. Everyone's a bit worried about hackers and companies like Facebook and Google. But with all the users out there, I'm sure there are people of greater interest than me for advertisers or hackers. So it doesn't really bother me. Despite being a frequent user of digital devices, Jessica does find the surveillance aspect very annoying. It is weird knowing that there are databases somewhere with information on your shopping habits and that data will eventually be sold on to other parties without us knowing what they'll do with it. Martin Klarman is critical of the volume of data being collected by companies, including data they don't even need for marketing. In practice, I think companies would be hard-pressed to divide up information they collect between the data they do and don't need. I'd say it's easier for them to just collect all the data. And however cautious Jessica and Mark choose to be while surfing the net, they'll inevitably be identified and then tracked all around the World Wide Web.